how you identify whether you're connecting with a lower being or a higher being is you have to within yourself become very, very, very pure. One of the things in the temple cultures that would happen is that if you wanted to be mystic, you'd go through intense purification. You know, you would purify your body. You would purify your mind. You would be trained into your heart. How can we tell if we are being possessed or weighed down by dark entities or brainwashed programming agendas? So um, it's pretty rare to be like, it's very rare to become fully possessed. Um, very, very, very rare. Um, and usually what will happen is a kind of like a lower being will sometimes come around and they'll try to like get energy by like scaring you or like attaching for a while or something like, you know, and, and, uh, there's, there's certain things or certain ways you can live your life that make you a lot more susceptible to this. Um, one of the ways is just never doing any type of spiritual development or spiritual realization. Um, and that just makes it so it's like an open chair up there or an open door up there. Um, so you're not able to, res to respond. So, so just completely denying the spirit is not a good idea. Um, that's something that can happen very easily in those occasions. Um, and also if you take a lot of substances or you do a lot of substances, anything that change that alters your reality, if you are constantly altering your reality, it can be very hard for you to get into your center and be clear and understand that there can be attachments on you. And I want to also be clear that a lot of the time when there's um, an entity that's kind of attaching, um, it's not always like a scary thing. A lot of the times it's a very subtle thing. So you want to make sure that you have a practice where you're always coming to your center, you're always feeling around your aura, you know, you're always feeling around your mind, you want to still your mind a lot, you want to just shut the mind down, and you want to just watch it, you want to just watch the programs coming through, and you want to get used to, you know, what what's there. Whenever a darker presence is coming around, the negativity in your life will increase, your fear will increase. If there's one thing, I mean, this could be an entire lecture to be honest with you. So the one thing that I'll say is that when these en energies start to come in, the fear and anxiety and the low emotional states will increase in your life because that's how you stay visible to these beings is you have to be very fearful. And that is the energy that they run on. You need anxiety, you need panic, you need depression, you need anxiety. The lower that your emotional state is with no recovery um, and no work on it, the more visible you are to these lower beings um, because that's the plane that they live in. And so usually when something's trying to be around you, it'll pull you into that lower state. Um, and also intrusive thoughts, as I was saying during the lecture on Sunday, um, in intrusive thoughts that just feel like they're not yours, um, you'd never think of them, those kinds of things can be um, an indicator of slipping into that lower state as well. And again, how to balance it is you want to come into the heart, which is the fifth dimension, and you can actually just disappear. When you raise your vibrational frequency enough through love... Um, you actually disappear to those types of beings. So these beings are actually a teacher for us because they augment the negative in our life. They try to create more of it. They try to kind of pull you down and tip the tables into negative things. It's, it, so it, it, it allows us to actually see ourselves clearer because the darker entities can only attach to exactly where we are not loving ourselves, to exactly where we need to heal so in a sense, they augment our shadow for us, and then we can face it and let it go. So um, there is sort of, I guess you could say, a spiritual purpose for it in a way, although it is very challenging. 
most people that are severely, I'll just put it this way. Most people that are severely darkly possessed and influenced have no idea that they are. We'll just put it that way. They have no idea that they are. They think it's something wonderful or they just have no clue. Um, and that's usually how it goes with the really bad ones. How can we tell if our energy is being funneled into the eight sphere? How to discern the difference from the eight sphere and psychic connection to true light beings? Well, in reality, every individual has to be tricked at some point and will be tricked at some point. We kind of come into this world and psychic development like little babies. And, you know, we will, we will encounter Luciferian, Luciferian entities and Luciferian beings. We'll also encounter harmonic beings or satanic beings. And we will have to experience what they feel like. You will have to know what the false light feels like if you want to overcome it. And so in your development as a mystic, you will be approached by false light beings. You will be. You will experience very dark beings that will probably come around you at some point because you're opening and you're developing. You know, I'm not going to tell you that it's all rainbows and butterflies. That's not honest. You will come around beings that appear to be extremely light, extremely loving, these luciferic beings. And they will give you great wisdom and make your body feel a certain way. And you'll think that you're having a spiritual experience. But then they'll say something that feels a little bit against your sovereignty. Or they'll say something that kind of allows them to parasitically attach to you a little bit. They'll tell you a little bit of a lie. A lie that is in their own self-interest. That Usually that they are saviors or that you need them or that they're a parent entity or that they're Jesus, or that they're someone very important, or, or whatever it is. But then they won't act that way. They won't have the kind of light that Jesus does, or that an ascended master does. It's a false light. And so you will experience that. You will, you will come into that. And only through experience will you realize that, oh, this is a lower this is a lower being. And how you do this is through purification. So how you identify whether you're connecting with a lower being or a higher being is you have to, within yourself, become very, very, very pure. One of the things in the temple cultures that would happen is that if you wanted to be a mystic, you'd go through intense purification. You know, you would purify your body. You would purify your mind. You would be trained into your heart. And there would be an immense, immense, immense focus on knowing thyself because everything that you receive from the higher realms, including the eight sphere and the lower astral, will, be, will come because there's an aspect of you that is like them. And so this means that if there is a darker entity that comes around you, it's going to always mirror kind of an aspect of yourself. And that's how it can appear for you. Um, and then, um, so it's our own vibrational frequency. It's a kind of physics that we have that we do where it really just mirrors ourself. Psychic ability is just really a mirroring. So we have to really keep that in mind and understand that we're not really victims to a really dark harmonic being that just projects fear and is terrifying. We're not victims of a, of a, of any being. We have to understand that we are in control because we can change our energy and change our perspective. And that connection can be gone away or purified. One way of knowing that your energy could be kind of connecting with the lower astral eighth sphere realm is that you may get you may start to get really intrusive thoughts and weird thoughts, violent thoughts, weird sexual thoughts. This is the other thing that people don't really talk about enough, but 
your, there was always um, a sexual purification that would happen because the, the reality is that beings from the eighth sphere, they really only have the lower three chakras that they can work with. So they really can't perceive or connect the energies of the higher ones because the heart is really the, the, the transitional space, as we were saying today. So if you are using your sexual energy improperly, that is actually a big connection to the eighth sphere. It's a big secret that a lot of people don't talk about. Um, a lot of beings from the eighth sphere will seek to use sex or, or sex in dreams and, and kind of sexual energy to attach themselves. And so you really have to get a hang of your desires and your sexuality, your sexual energy. You have to be able to channel it properly. You have to be able to purify yourself in that area because that's one of the that's one of the things that they will use to bind themselves with you. And um, because it's the most physical element. And this is also why a lot of um, initiates, when they were really trying to develop, or people that want a really clear mind, like athletes, they will refrain from, um, they will refrain from sex, or they will re refrain from sort of the, the, the type of sexual encounters that are common today. Um, and so be aware of that. That is the area that they really can see and attach and that they really use. Um, and so the secret to that is that you really want to get your kundalini chain or your, or, or your kundalini snake up to the heart. A lot of kundalini development, it's like, yes, bring it up to the third eye, bring it up to whatever, sure. But you really do want to get it to the heart. You really want to have feelings in your body that are of unconditional love for humanity, unconditional love for others. You want to get to that heart-based energy and you want to feel that in your body as feelings, as sensations. And that will bring your sexual energy up out of your lower chakras, which is very animalistic and focused on physical pleasure, focused on um, uh, like more animalist, the animalistic nature. You want to bring that up and you want to at least bring it into the heart. And so you want to bring all the sensation, all of that energy right into the heart and you want it to be a feeling of love for humanity. You want it to become very refined. And that's what the heart does to the lower three chakras. Is it refines it and the kundalini becomes refined, becomes unavailable to the eighth sphere. So please, please, please keep that in mind. This is why when you would enter an old mystery tradition or when you were being developed, that celibacy was often taught and often suggested is because at this dimension, it's very hard to... Um, uh, it's, it's, it's hard. We, we, we have to get out of some of the damage that we've done to ourselves um, through, I would say, sexual energy collectively being in channel, channeled wrong. There's a damage there, and that connects us very closely with the eighth sphere, actually. It's this damaged sexual energy and sexual perversions and this inverting of sexuality, which should be total love, not only a love for your partner, not only a love for yourself, but a love for humanity and a love for the earth and a love for God. And that is what purifies the sexual channels and that's what prepares you for higher connection. Um, and it is something that is not taught today. Um, and that is why we have so many problems. Um, but what else can I say? Um, so get your sexual energy in order, get it together, um, get that, you know, start learning about that and get that in order because that is a major connection to the eighth sphere. Um, and uh, it takes time to discern which is which. It takes practice, it takes time, but you're always in control. Um, and usually at some point, if an energy, if a, if a being is from the eighth sphere, the false light. They're fundamentally manipulative. So at some point, they're going to want to appear to you as a god. They're going to want worship. And they'll tell you weird things. Like usually if a being is from the false light, they don't encourage sovereignty. They don't encourage you to like go elsewhere 
or they don't encourage you to like develop really. They want you to only connect with them or they'll, what else would, how else? Um, they'll kind of want to protect their resources really. They'll, they'll often want to appear as a parent or a helper or as above you as well. Even if they, they give you a loving energy, they'll, they're always a little bit above you. They're always more advanced than you. Whereas if you're connecting with someone from a higher light, the light and the love energy is so pure that a hierarchy doesn't even come into it at all. But it's very obvious that these beings are above you. They have to portray themselves as that. You have to be beneath them. They have to be some authority that get, that always gives you information. And there's no real set. There's a there, there, there's a weird relationship with these false light beings, often in the new age, because they are always these savior types, this parent being, these parent types that know humanity better than they know themselves. And humanity is like this child. Well, that's not really how higher beings speak to you. And we can, I can actually write a lecture for this if you guys really want to go into this, but keep that in mind. The other thing is the body sensations for the, for the physical empaths or for the empaths out there that get a lot of body sensations when they connect, um, is that if you, um, are connecting with like a lower being, like especially like a luciferic being what will happen is they will flood your nervous system with like excited energy or energy that's kind of fast and sporadic. And it's almost a distracting energy. It almost kind of just numbs you out. It's almost like it's too, it's kind of, it's not truly ecstatic because it's not rooted. It's not grounded. It doesn't have that long wave to it. It's not deeply peaceful. It's excitement. And so they'll kind of stroke your nervous system with this feeling of like excitement. And it's like, oh my God, you know, and it's, it's, it's not the, when you're really connecting with a higher being, um, usually you'll have to work through whatever layers of fear you have, because sometimes you can feel that sometimes, but you will feel a deeper, you'll immediately come into alignment and it's almost like you'll sink into this depth. It'll bring you into this alignment and this pure clarity that's like velvet. The nervous system isn't going crazy. It almost just relaxes and you just start to like expand. And so that feels very, very different. Oftentimes with Luciferian beings, it's about motivation and it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's popping. It's and it's almost that, that that's how it can become almost animalistic because it's all about hiding and distracting. It's almost like when you connect with a Luciferian being, it's distracting you. It's a false stroking of the nervous system. It's too fast, and they can't get that depth, the lower depth in there, the the, the, the spiritual depth. <laughs>